live from Long Beach, California. Oh yes, this feels like a strobe light over here. <laughs> Hello guys and happy um, Thursday. It is our last week with um, Ninja Steph who is talking about heart health. And so we are, to the topic today is lasting love, still talking about hearts and um, just keeping ourselves healthy. And so I'm gonna let her take it away. We're gonna do a little recap. While she's doing that, I am gonna go ahead and tag some friends and make sure that they get to tune in live with us. Remember to ask questions. And thank you so much for supporting us here at Team MFF. Yay. All right, Ninja Step, take it away. So excited to see you guys again. It's our last Thursday together in February. Okay, we talked about the heart. I love the theme for this month. We, we're never going to give it up. That's better. Love. That's we better. Love. <laughs> we love our hearts, so we're always going to take them forward with us no matter when or where. It's just nice to have a month to kind of focus on how much love that we have mm -hmm. and what's yeah. going on. So, so I learned a lot. Uh, a lot of things happened this yes. month uh, with heart health in general. So we're going to kind of talk about that stuff. So like... Talk like if we we're in the street, if we we're at the gym, uh, we're gonna recap kind of all the like like lingo and like street stuff and make sure that we all got it down. The heart so street stuff. Somebody asked us a question <laughs> about what we've been talking about, we can answer them. Okay, some some people weren't able to tune in before, so maybe they'll get uh, the full package right now. Perfect. Thanks. Okay, so number one thing, we're walking on the street and I say, oh hi. You know we're at the doctor's office and we get called in the back and they want to take our weight and our height and we're like oh, okay we'll go. you know <laughs> we all love that, that right <laughs> and then the next thing they do is they want to take your blood pressure <gasps> your blood yes. pressure and then they never tell you okay so when they go they put the machine on now you're watching if there's cleaning it or not and between the use but relax remember so when we take our blood pressure how should we be when we're taking our blood pressure. Like relax. Should, we should need to we relax. Mean? Relax when you're getting your blood pressure taken. So we need to relax. We need to make sure our feet are flat on the ground. Oops, okay. Our arm is nice and relaxed, you know, like our Mary's famous 90 degree angles, okay? <laughs> because the placement of the cuff is really important too, okay? If they're using a cuff too big on you or too small on you, it's not gonna get an accurate read. You can always ask to change the cuff, okay? They have three different sizes. It's very easy for them to pull in a bow, do you know what it is? So maybe that's a good <laughs> thing. Um, so check, you know, make sure they're not using an extra large cuff on you or too small of a cuff on you. Okay, that's important. So the placement of the cuff, being relaxed, having your body position neutral is gonna be the best way to get an accurate blood pressure result. Okay, so that's just the kind of a general first thing. And then when they read it, okay, so, I'm gonna take Mary's blood pressure. Hi, Hi, nice to meet you. You're height away. Oh, you're so strong. You must Thank do so you. many things to like. I'm part of up. Team MFF. Oh my God, what do you do to yeah. stay so <laughs> strong? That's the first question. Join the platform, MaryFultonFit.vhx.tv. Okay. Exactly. So <laughs> once, once you know, they ask you all those amazing questions at uh, your office visit, which you know, go get your wellness check. Once yes. a year, free visit. Okay, it's a free visit. Oh, that's good to know. It's a free visit. It's universal, so you say you want your wellness check. You say that when you call. Okay. Because then they'll make sure that they put a note in there to the doctor, and then the doctor's going to also send you afterwards. If it's connected, like mine had a lab connected to it, so I just go to the back and get my lab work done at the same place, which is nice, but that's not very common anymore. They've been shutting those down. So they'll send you to a quest or another place to get your blood work done. And then they'll follow up with you about stuff if it's abnormal. But you're gonna wanna ask, call back and get a copy of those results sent to you. Okay, yes. it's gonna tell you cholesterol. Okay, we're gonna talk about that at the end. It's gonna tell you those heart healthy labs that we can't see with our eyes, we can't measure with a blood pressure machine. Okay, so we're gonna go, that's what we're doing. We're at our office wellness check. Okay, we're getting Get our blood, blood pressure done. done. We're getting our blood work done. We're going to look at, you know, what that means afterwards. But we're in the office still. We're just hanging out. We're chatting in the waiting room. And I'm like, so what was your blood pressure when you went? You know, oh. first you got to ask the people, like, when they check it, they're facing it. They write it down, and then they go away. They should tell you, okay, right away. But 
what numbers, what does that mean? What do those numbers mean? Like, I'm confused. I'm a girl in the waiting room. I don't understand Hello. what blood pressure means. So what, what, did you have your blood pressure taken back there? What was it? What's normal? Oh, uh, the last time I had my blood pressure taken, I think you said I was, oh my gosh, my brain's not remembering right now. But I what should was... be about the top number and the bottom number? Mm, 80 over 120? So 90, 90 over 120. Opposite. Because remember the top yeah. numbers, the the squeeze of the pump. Okay. So 120 over yes, 80. Yes, exactly. Okay. So shoot that. See? That's okay because everybody messes up our numbers. We're going to mess up our numbers. That's why we're just talking about this. If we're in the waiting room, if we're at the gym, we're in the bathroom line. Okay? We talk about this stuff with people. Okay? It's important. Right. So 120 over 80 because we have squeeze, fill. Squeeze, fill. Fill. Remember that love dub. That's mm -hmm. what's going on in the heart. So know your numbers. That's average. You don't have to know your exact number, but just know what those numbers mean. And those numbers are systolic over diastolic. And what, what were mine? Happened. I think it was like 114. Yeah, it was hers is good. Even I was excited if she gets it was like 118 over 76. That's that's really good. Yeah. Yeah. So you know, kind of know your baseline if you run a little bit under or over. Uh, that's okay. No, you know, you might have your legs crossed. You might have been really anxious. Yeah. Um, we go to doctors. It's not very comfortable, but it shouldn't be really high. Okay. Just like, you know, that pulse that we're talking about, like when you're sitting, standing and, you know, up, it shouldn't jump up too much. It should kind of settle to your normal and we'll kind of go back over what those numbers mean too. Okay. So, we got our numbers. So Mary, she was 120 over 80. The lady took her blood pressure. It was She gave her the good thumbs up. Mary goes in to talk to her doctor. So I'm here. I'm going to ask my doctor, like, just to do a general checkup. So they're going to ask you, like, are you, how are you feeling? You know, like, you know, will I feel really lightheaded when I get up? You know, this is when you're going to want to tell your doctor those things during your wellness check so that, you know, if there's any referrals I need to send you to, um, they can then send you on to somebody. Like I asked because I had pain in my leg, you know, can, I, can you send me someone to like get a strap? Because I see people like jogging with their little straps on, you know, and I'm like, maybe I just need a strap, you know? And then he sent me to an orthopedic specialist who found out that I actually had a bone stress fracture oh, in my leg, you know, okay. and this is years ago and it's non-healing and it's, it's consistently get, gotten worse from work. So if I would never ask, I would never gone, I would never know that. Okay, so all these things is just be like a curious cat all the time. Want to know anything and everything and just take it all in. And then explain it to somebody else that's sitting next to you. You know, like, do you know it's free if you ask for a wellness check? You know, that's what I'm here for. So you're actually going in for a visit. They just don't know it. So just think of what you need. Or if you don't know, go in. And then just get your blood work done, and then they'll see if something's off That's or good. not. Okay? So it's just being proactive about your heart health and just your health in general. Yes. So the first week we talked about the blood pressure, yes. and then the second week that we were together, we talked about... We talked about our pulse. Our pulses. Yes. Okay. Our pulses. And, the, and last week we talked about heart rate. So I'm going to grab our little paper and bring it over while Steph's talking Yay. to you, just so we can go over that. Okay, really so quick. actually the second week we talked about heart disease because that's when I ended up having to help some man who was in an accident because he had a heart attack and his little pump wasn't working um, enough to squeeze that oxygen to the tissues, to the brain, to the body, to the organs and back. Okay, squeeze, fill. Squeeze, fill. 120, 80. 120, 80. Okay, systolic, diastolic. So his pump wasn't working. You know, we jumped in, we helped him. So when that stuff happens, when you're at a place and you're walking yeah, around, uh, I know some people like look for the emergency exits in a room, you know, those are smart things to Thanks do for, for safety. Mm -hmm. You know, like where's the stairs, where's, if there's a fire, where would I go, an emergency exit. And also with your new lens, you can look for safety equipment on the walls. So like those automatic defibrillators, I found myself looking at the gym, like where they're at. Mm -hmm. So if anything were to happen, I would there know where to run that. and grab that, right? Myself or send somebody, hey, it's by the bathroom. I saw it over there. So um, just because right now we're working out outside and, you know, it's hot, people get dehydrated faster, you know, their pumps, you know, too. might not be able to keep up 
with that uh, rapid, rapid maxed out mm -hmm. heart rate that we've been talking about. So people have a tendency to not have enough oxygen because that heart right. isn't able to pump that oxygen fast enough to the brain to where you might have people fainting um, and stuff like that. that. Those are all connected. So, but to know the difference between like was someone just dehydrated and fell over? Or did they have a heart condition and fell over, right? So that's when we have to be able to think back to these videos saying, hey, let me check this guy's pulse. Right, because That's we right. know oh, yeah, where we to know look. Oh yeah, we know our CPR. Right? That's what we did. We 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 talked about heart health and heart mm -hmm. disease, so we could always check somebody's pulse and see. Oh, it's pretty strong. It's strong and regular. Well, when I checked that man's pulse, it was weak and very irregular. So I knew I did not have a strong heart, and it wasn't he just got dehydrated and passed out. Right? He he had an episode with his heart. So. That's where you're going to look, you know what I mean? If you're checking out somebody, you know, it's, it's not a bad place to just look, just to check. And, okay, they have a, they have a pulse and it's strong. Looks like they're probably dehydrated. Let's get them to the shade, mm -hmm. you know. But it's always good to grab the AED in case it, it isn't the case. So just know that in the emergency situation, first thing you're going to do is... Call for help. Yay! <laughs> Somebody I know, it's call like 911. <laughs> but actually, you don't say somebody call 911. You have to assign it to somebody. So, bearded man, call 911. Bearded man. We're going to call the bearded <laughs> yeah, man. The bearded man. You. You look like you. you know what you're doing. Right there in the white shirt. <laughs> you call 911. You got to be specific. Great. So, yeah, delegating. Um, yeah. Somebody call 911, right? Get somebody to help because we're not ready to jump in yet. So, we need the team to show up. But in that time period, Whoever can think fast enough, like, what am I supposed to do? Okay, call 911. Call 911. Okay, what do I do after that? Okay, we're probably going to want to see if there's an, a defibrillator anywhere in the building to at least put it near the man. And if somebody does has had the training, they know, like, you know, you turn on the button and it tells you exactly where to put the pads. And then it tells you not to touch it and it analyzes it. does the same no. thing. It's pretty amazing. That's cool. But you have to be brave enough to just get the machine and turn it on. Okay, so... We're just going to be those brave ones from now on. Okay, we're going to be, be a those hero for somebody out there and like stuff with. Keep our eyes out for these things that are happening because we don't know, right? So, and your, and your family. We talked about those symptoms. Okay, if somebody's having symptoms of heart trouble, what does that look like? And does it look the same in everybody? Probably not. I would think everybody's a little bit different. Yeah, so those symptoms that people have when they're, they are experiencing a heart attack are very, very different. Remember we talked about like from indigestion, women oh, having yeah. indigestion and feeling nauseous is like one of the main uh, signs. Like signs for something's wrong, exertion and needing to sit down and then waiting and feeling a sharp pain, okay? I talk to people and they always tell me something different. Yeah. So it's never the same. So if you find yourself feeling pain that's not good for or normal for you or a loved one starts telling you about pain that's not their normal pain you know you need to really start thinking huh what is this and we should probably get it looked at you know asap on stuff like the pump okay the pump <laughs> is the asap one uh and what are those tests that we're gonna go and ask the doctor for when we go to so me and mary were in the waiting room and she's like i have this chest pain that hurts and I just, they just took my blood pressure. It was like 150 over 90. I don't know. I, I think that's good. Okay. So I would be worried. Okay. She has her heart's working extra, extra hard and squeezing really, really hard. You know, that 60 to hundred times a minute. That's a lot for the heart to work that hard. Okay. So she's going to want to ask the doctor a couple key questions when she's talking to the doctor. Okay, can you remember any of the names of the tests that we could test to check for our heart? Um, I think last week we talked about the EKG. Yes, yeah, so that's the one that sees our rhythm. Mm -hmm. Okay, we wanna be normal sinus rhythm. Um, there are people that have different rhythms, so those can be detected and caught on the 12 lead, which they do when you come in, If especially in the ER, they would automatically do that. So EKG is one of them. That's very good way there's a stress test that you can take but that's like like you know if you're not feeling well so you can 
take a stress test. That's a maintenance type of yeah, deal. Like as you get over say. in time, you know how people are like, oh, yeah. I have to have a, a mammogram. Oh, I had to have, you know, um, other tests as you get older. So that's something you would want to look at. Like, you know, our stress test, how well our heart does while we're exercising. Your family members are going to advocate for this. Like, can we get, you know, can we... The doctor's like, oh, it looks fine. The blood work looks fine. The blood pressure's fine. They're going to go home, and you know something's not right. You're going to get the car wash deluxe. You're going to say, hold up, doctor. Can we get an x-ray? Remember that x-ray can show enlargement in the heart? Okay, that's called cardiomegaly. Um, that means the heart is swollen, you know, that you have an enlarged heart. You can see that in an x-ray. It's not normal. It's not usually common, but you can see it. It's one of the few things you can detect in the x-ray. Um, CT scan. CT scan yep. for everybody. Okay. Right. CT scan. AKG. CT scan, EKG, stress test. And then the one that I was telling you might be like the scarier term was that, um, you know, when they go in and they look at your heart. So the, the angioplasty where they oh, go Oh, the in. angioplasty. That's Yeah, helpful. the angiogram. Okay. So they'll go in angiogram. and look. Okay. So, and then sometimes they'll do the little, they'll do a diagnostic and a fix at the same time if they need to, or they'll be able to tell you your inside of your heart looks beautiful. Okay. So that's the recap of like, we're sitting in the waiting room. She's now like, oh yeah, I got to remember to ask the doctor for, you know, x-ray, CT scan, stress test um, for my mom or whoever that loved one is um, that is experiencing these types of symptoms. Okay. So that's the recap of that, and then we're going to go into our pulse. Does anybody have any major questions while we go on? We're just doing kind of like a recap of everything, so. Um, that way if you missed anything, you didn't miss anything now. Yes. Okay. Okay, so pulse. It's the beats of your heart. How many times it's going to beat each minute, okay? Do you guys remember what your heart rate should be? Does anybody remember, remember the number? These numbers are important because once you know that number, it's that you don't have to memorize any other numbers. 120 over 80 is the only Kyla, number. Kyla, you got a number for us? We have so far, and that's the squeeze. So what? how many times does that pump squeeze a minute? So we should be somewhere between 60 to 100. Yes. Okay, for your heart rate to be in that healthy zone. Okay. So fine years, uh, the best time to check your heart rate was, do you remember from a few weeks ago? When's the best time to check your heart rate, to know your resting heart rate? When we talked about resting, we talked about I would max. think the morning, but that's just what I think. She got it. So okay. all the things that is going on in Mary's life and all the information. See, some of the sticks with you guys and me too. I mean, we're so busy, you guys. And I'm a former Peace Corps volunteer, so I know a little bit about how to deal with this weird time thing, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? Where it's like almost like the weeks or the day is so long and the week is so fast. Yeah. You know what I yes, mean? Yes, totally. That, that's how life feels right now. Yeah. If you guys want to get fast, the day's quarantine long. and how Peace Corps and quarantine are like this and weird, like today was so busy and it was like my off day. So I'm like, busier on my off day than I am like yeah you're trying to catch up heart on, rate on up. day so that's okay you guys like that's why we're doing this recap and this information so that you can remember um so she remember yeah like right when you first wake up actually when you're still in bed don't yeah. go for your phone and look and see oh, and then start scrolling through like looking at stuff look at your heart rate and if you don't have a, a watch that does this how would you be able to do it yeah, you can just take your pulse like I like to do it here because I feel like I can feel it better oh yes <laughs> and then um you can do your wrist right you said that there's one right here on the you belly, the belly button. so but now I want you to button. focus with you doing your crunches see if you could see that pulse it's Boom. the baby that kicks you that you don't have that's in there anymore <laughs> that was a little bit harder to count but it's so cool it's, it's probably so somewhere cool. in the inner thigh as well right I remember there being some. Yeah, there is. Oh my God, there's so many. Yeah. Where's the top? But of those the are these are easier ones. <laughs> these are the yeah. yeah the ones you're gonna be wanting yeah, to focus Mary, on. Hi Mary, what's up? Okay, so you can check your own pulse. Okay, you can't really check your own blood pressure. So I encourage you. I hope that they're still allowing people to use those machines at the grocery stores and the 
Rite Aids and CVSs, but that's where you would know if you have no idea what your baseline is. There you go. go or you can buy baseline. one at CVS, mm -hmm. have it at home, and do your blood pressure. I would just not it. recommend the wrist one. Oh, okay. 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 It's not very accurate. It's just like kind of like your watch. It's off a little bit. There's no way your heart can catch up with that because your heart is so magical and this mm -hmm. can't really capture that magic. So uh, I would definitely recommend to get the one that's for the upper arm and not for the wrist. We used them in nursing school and they we would do the manual as well and we saw the, the differences between it the two. It was, was not very good. So that's just my personal recommendation, but something is better than nothing, so. We also talked about last week um, about your max heart rate and we kind of gave you some of the equations. If you guys want these again, we can give them to you, but you just want to take 220 minus your age, and that's yes. going to be your max heart rate. If you're 40, it would be 180. And so you can kind of see that range here for the different ages, right? You're 60, you want to be your max heart rate 160, 50, 170, so on and so forth. 20s, you can go to 200, get it, baby. Get it. Um, <laughs> but also looking at your target heart rates, right? So when you want to be at a moderate level, somewhere between 50 to 70% of your max heart rate. So I think mine was 90 to 126 for my age, right? And then same thing here for your intense, when you wanna hit those like really intense moments, then um, 70 to 85 of your max. So for mine, since my max is 180, then we would be somewhere in here? Yeah, Seven. exactly. Okay. So that helps us to know, like, you know, after the activity's over, sometimes like it'll be like your max, Heart rate was 176. That means for my heart and the muscle, um, I was reaching really close to maxing out as much work that my heart could physically do or should do. And if you go over, it's okay. I mean, you're not sustaining in that level for very long. You're just pushing yourself to that max. You know, you're not like maxing out 100% of the time, right? You're just maxing out, if you can, just a, a portion of your workout. And then afterwards, mine gives me, I mean, it gives me a lot of information, but what I've been looking at now that we've had this talk is how long was I in that moderate zone and how long was I in that intense zone now, Oh yeah. right? Because I kind of start off and kind of like, ooh, like, you know, we all do like, ooh. And then you realize like once you start getting bouncy and you're in there and it's hard for me good. like to stop and let my heart rate slow all the way below that moderate to get it back to moderate to intense. So I'm one of those people, I just have to stay in that moderate zone during the switch. So if you're one of those people and you're doing a class and you know we have to change weights and you know your heart rate is going down and it's hard for you to get it back, you know, it's you know, to moderate and then back to intense, then step in place. You know, like those are those people that you see at the stoplight, you know, like me, like Keep that would moving. just be like, do, 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 do. like yeah. uh, girl, it's red, you need to chill, yes. you know. But no, those are the people that maybe like me, it's hard for them to get it back into that intense zone mm. because once it goes back to my min, you know, it doesn't want to go back up. It's yeah, like, oh, I want to rest. <laughs> so, <laughs> That's funny. And then I just kind of hang out in that moderate zone the rest of my, mm, my, interesting. In, my workout instead of staying in that moderate zone and then busting up to that intense. So I've noticed that on my watch. Oh, that's good. That's from, mm -hmm. from, Taking from our, classes. yeah, from here, from mm -hmm. talking with you guys and going, oh, wow, like, mm -hmm. I do better if I could just, you know, I'm like a little jumping bean. I just got to kind of move in place like while I'm doing it. And then when I'm done, I'm done, you know? Um, so yeah, those are awesome. some of the things that were my big take home from um, all the stuff that we talked about, but it's very, it's pretty simple stuff, but it's so important, right? Like who would have thought like talking about heart health and just knowing those basic things that we talk about systolic, diastolic, uh, hypertension, that's high blood pressure, hypotension, low blood pressure. Okay, we hear these things, it's scary. It's not now because we have the power. We know what it means and we know we can watch it and we know we can make it better. And if we can't because something's wrong with our family history, we know how to ask the doctors to advocate to see, well, if I do have a family history and you're looking at my cholesterol and you're saying Get it's high, high, then, you know, can we do these other tests, please? You know, can we move forward so I can know as much as I can about my heart? And you always have those test results so you can go to another doctor and be like, oh, I had an echo on this day. Remember, like, they'll do it multiple times and compare 
your heart, um, it's called the ejection fraction, how well it's squeezing mm -hmm. the blood out to the last time you had that test. Don't think one MRI is the same from one day to the next, they're not. These are things that I thought before I worked as a nurse, before I worked in a hospital setting, like, oh, I had an MRI before Max, that's fine. Like, I don't need another one. Yes, you do. I mean, like I said, sometimes, and I'm a neuro um, specialty nurse, we give MRIs daily sometimes mm -hmm. for our neuro patients because they're small changes and we need to make sure what's going on Susan. in there. Okay, so awesome. just know that you know how to advocate for yourself, for your family. You know what these terms mean. Don't be afraid because when you're afraid, you do nothing. And like I said, that's what happens when your family member collapses in the living room. You, you freeze. Know. You're gonna call 911, okay? You're gonna tell the guy in the beard, the, beard, the, beard the mouth. white shirt, to call 911. <laughs> He's not here. You tell the next person next to them, yeah. your child or whoever, <laughs> that's there to call 911, okay? So just know that that's the first thing you can do is just be able to know that you're gonna freeze and know what the steps are because we've gone over it. Yeah. And you ought, you do have the power. You can check their pulse. You know, you can see, hey, it's a little, it's there. Yeah, they have a heartbeat then, but is it strong? Like, mm -hmm. I just knew, and I don't know how I knew. Well, I mean, the fact that I'm a nurse, I knew what to look for, but now you guys do too. Oh, and awesome. I froze too, it's a stranger, right? I'm just on my way to go to the store, like Friday, bye, you know? Like, so I froze too, and all those basics come back to me. So that's the first thing I did. I was like, I'm a, we're going to lose this heart. You know, this heart is not strong enough, so we will help the pump. How do you help the pump? You just pump the pump. You know what I mean? And that's what these muscles are for, you know? Like, yeah. get in that's there, awesome. get beast mode. You can save somebody's life. Um, you know, get into these walks. Get into this community of mm -hmm. health. There's yeah. so many resources out there. I wish I knew more. Um, I love all this stuff. I love, yes, you know, perfect. how to incorporate all this stuff into our life. And, you know, like, that's why I say, like, even if you think, like, cleaning isn't working out, it is. You know, you're getting that ticker of gardening. Like, all yeah. that stuff is heart health. Heart it's health. good for you. That's Thank the you. lasting love that we're talking about. Yes. It's like, don't think, oh, man, I skipped Mary's workout because I really, really, really wanted to garden and it's really bad and I, I just need to do it. You know, like, you're still getting your heart pumping that yeah. whole time. You could have been in the zone because you were so excited to do it you could have been hitting your your moderate to intense just by gardening i mean you you have no idea what it is until you do it okay and everything you do makes your heart stronger everything you don't do is going to make your heart weaker remember and it's still that muscle is still pulling and snapping pulling and snapping okay so if you have high blood pressure and you're not doing much and it's pulling and snapping really hard that many times a minute, that muscle will wear out. Okay, so we need to know our baselines. Mm, That's the only important. thing I'm preaching is like, just go get informed, go get a free wellness check. You'll be like blown away. I get one every year mm -hmm. and I compare them like from one year to the next. I'm like, oh my God, my cholesterol was like high in nursing school a little bit. And I cooked everything from scratch mostly. And then he looked, so there's under cholesterol, there's the healthy and the unhealthy. Okay, you have to have fats in your diet. You have yes. to have fats, you have to have protein, you have to have carbs. That's where the energy comes from, mm -hmm. right? So those three things. What fats are you putting in your body? Are you using um, canola oil versus olive oil? You know, are you a cheese person versus an avocado person? Okay, those fats are in there and they're so delicious, but which ones yeah. are we choosing to use? So the healthy fats are called hdls okay you've heard of maybe some some of that on the lab work and then the bad fats are the ldls so we look at the number of the overall cholesterol but then it's broken down into categories so my hdl was so good compared to my ldl that the doctor was like i hardly see any patients with that high of a ratio of healthy versus unhealthy. He's like, I would never worry about your cholesterol. It's like, oh wow, even though in the nice. report I thought, oh, I'm high, oh my God, I'm so high, you know, like I've never had high cholesterol in my life, like what do I do? I thought I ate healthy, I was cooking all my own food, you know? 
But actually, it was because I was eating all of the right fats that I hit a higher ratio and I was closer to that, like, within defined limits line. But I was doing, like, a lot of, like, shredding, mostly, like, um, very low carb at that point. And so I was eating more fats. Um, and that's what reflected in my lab work. And I got concerned, but actually ended up being nothing. But hmm. the fact that I knew this, to compare it to the before, when I changed my diet, how it changed my blood and changed my blood work. And it could have meant a, a diet for the worse for my heart health. But at, in actuality, it wasn't. Okay. Um, and I've been yeah. monitoring ever since, kind of doing like a low-fat, low-carb kind of diet and more protein-based for me, myself. Um kind of help me. So just know what works with your body and know what these numbers mean. Okay. And we're going to talk about the 15 top foods for heart Perfect. health. So Let's what finish off with those. do you guys think that they are? We want to get some guesses because they're actually really interesting. So what tell us what you think. 15 top foods you think that are good for your heart. Top Let's 15 get. foods. What, what do you think would be one, Mary? Oh, I'm going to go with like vegetables so i'm gonna say like spinach broccoli Yay! all the greens are really the good greens, the greens the greens those are the ones and those are the ones that we really need right tomatoes kyla says tomatoes tomatoes is on the list Yay! what else what else guys okay so leafy greens tomatoes some people would be like i don't like salad <laughs> i don't I want salad. to do kale so Put spinach, it in kale, smoothie. collard greens, okay, those have vitamins, minerals, and accents. Those are the leafy greens. Those are, like, the good, good ones. Um, sometimes I'll eat, like, a little, you know those, like, um, the Asian slaw salad? High fives, Rebecca. I'll do, like, a slaw salad with, like, my breakfast, even. Yeah. It's so freaking delicious. I have greens. I just made that awesome. egg frittata with spinach, so I get my greens in with my eggs already. Yeah, I mix a lot of eggs and egg whites with my veggies. It's, like, camouflage, and they're all yeah. wrapped up and beautiful, and they go in my mouth. They're all wrapped in egg. Right, so there yummy. you go. Do you guys make turkey chili or regular chili? I throw spinach, bell peppers, onions. Um, it I'll it makes a little it bit heartier, corn. too. Yeah. You know? So you can sneak in all those vegetables in there if it's hard for you to eat them just by themselves they don't sound that good but there's lots of ways to sneak them in um whole grains are really good it's another one we yeah berries berries yay so we got Love you know berries. some people that you know are into more of the fruits mm -hmm. okay we have berries yep avocados that i was talking about those are those hdls the healthy fats uh, fish oils, so that some people take um, those as supplements as well. Some people will eat their yes. greens and supplements. Some people eat their protein and supplements. Kyla says nuts. Yes, walnuts. Oh, the ones I don't like the wall. They're the brain nuts. I call them. They're so dry. They're so good. I like walnuts. She loves it. I could eat any of the other nuts. I don't know. I think I was yeah, like traumatized walnuts. as a child. You were traumatized by walnuts. I we used keep to trying. Them. I'll I'll try anything. I'll keep. I'll eat it. But I'm like. So, so these are these are good. So so far we've got whole grains, greens, berries, um, nuts, uh, fish oils, uh, walnuts, beans. Beans. Which kind of beans? All beans. Uh, it's saying. Let's see. Any top beans? Okay, beans. I know a lot of you guys are eating lots of. Says beans in out one there. study, in eating pinto beans has Ooh. reduced triglycerides. There you okay, go. triglycerides so are fat. Beans are good for you too. So triglycerides and bad Magical LDL. Fruits. So if you have yeah. high LDL, the bad, the bad triglycerides, you would kind of switch over to some of these uh, food, uh, foods. Okay, dark chocolate. Dark chocolate. Made the list. So this list is an awful, you guys. It's Everybody, let's go get some list. chocolate. <laughs> chocolate. Kale and dark chocolate Ooh, and for berries. dinner and berries. Berries okay, and like, dark chocolate. You know, obviously. Not all day, every day, oh, but coffee. these are okay. Just kidding. <laughs> Tomatoes, almonds. Tomatoes are in the house, Kyla. Seeds, okay. These Seeds. are natural things that are high in healthy fats and oils. Healthy, natural, okay, not processed. All right, so seeds. Ooh, I love garlic. this one. <sighs> garlic breath. So garlic, she your loves breath garlic. When you're breath you got to be like, I'm the same here in my heart, man. Yep. There you go. Don't on Heart health with garlic. garlic breath. Go and get the Costco <laughs> thing. It's got oh all the Oh, my God. I love peels. that thing. It's so amazing. I don't even put the lid on when I'm done because 
I use it so much, I scoop and then just put the lid back on because it's hard to get over the summer. There you go. Like so sticky. more garlic for more your life. Garlic, garlic. Throw and it in there. We have edamame. So that's that's yummy. I never would have thought of that. And green and green tea. tea. Okay, so, so surprisingly, tea. some of your favorite things might be on that list and you might cool. be already working towards that. But like I said, these are oh, things that are just, that. you know, good for your heart and fun to eat and you can integrate them in other healthy foods, heart healthy foods. Some people, you know, will take the egg white out uh, or the egg white away from the yolk because the yolk is what actually holds the cholesterol in the egg. So if they already have high cholesterol, they might just take the yolk and out the and whites. do the egg whites. Okay? Still using the egg so, yolk. I love that yolk. I know. I love that yolk. <laughs> I think my body needs it. My <laughs> body asks me for a lot of, like, like, like fats. Like, it needs right. it. Like, I do better. If I do too lean it's, of stuff. It, it satiates yeah. the brain. Mm -hmm. So your brain will, like, feel like that cream <laughs> and be happier longer. Yay! Um, happy <laughs> lasting heart health okay yes. yeah like my breath after i eat garlic i feel like i just ate that garlic bagel like 10 minutes ago it could be like four hours because i got like dragon breath and it's so delicious, <laughs> right but i'm just joking but yeah i mean you do get more lasting um feeling you know in in your brain in your body when you're able to eat these healthy fats and they kind of keep you fuller longer because yep. you feel happy when you eat them and they're good for your heart, <laughs> you know? So, you know, sitting down and having your little green tea and your, you know, you saved your little bits of, Mary knows never to give me chocolate because I can't save anything, but if you're the I person that can save your little <laughs> snack while you have your, you know, tea, that would be great. I would just yeah. be like, I have to get rid of these and eat, them, eat all. them all. That's so funny. Eat them all. So, you know, we hope you guys have enjoyed, you know, the last month. Steph has been just amazing coming over, just donating her time to us. Can we give her a round of applause? I love you guys. You she guys committed are four weeks every Thursday here at Four With Me and um, has really taught us so much about our heart and we appreciate it from our heart. And um, do you guys have any questions as we wrap up? I know Kyla had one way up here let me come I just want to say I love you guys and this community and I just think that um you know we're just need to as you know Mary like it's just it's, her kindness is infectious and it's infected all of us Thank so you. we are gonna now infect we, <laughs> we are time. now gonna infect the snuggle rest. time is with your heart <laughs> so now our job is to go out and infect other people with that love, with that information, yeah. with all of this goodness um, that you feel inside. So just to share it um, with each other. And, and like, I mean, I, I've been so much more friendly at the gym. She, you know, I used to just go get my workout on and thank you. And like walk out the door, you know, I didn't talk to anybody. I just needed that to be my place to get it out and for my heart health. And you know, now I've seen people and I see them pushing themselves and they're much older than me. And then, and I'm like so impressed and, or, you know, like my story where I was, you know, 275 pounds at my heaviest, like, and I see people who are, you know, at their, you know, maybe not their heaviest and they're pushing themselves. And I want to say, Oh my God, I see you. You're doing such a good job. Like I, I love that you're working that hard. And I wish you know, I knew what you knew now that you're doing for yourself, you know, back then. So it's okay to go up and talk to people and, and share your story, you know, and say like, I'm really inspired by you. And like, um, all these things come up and you're like, wow, we, we didn't realize that we were connected somehow. Um, mm. even just besides being at this class together. So lots of you love. Know, you can there. always reach out to us, you know, yeah, um, we're here. We're lucky enough to be in the same room. I'm very lucky to have shared this space with Mary. So to yes. me, it's an honor. And, mm -hmm. and you guys know, I'm like, we you. want you, the people that are out there that want to come in and share your story, or, you know, you guys have something that you can share with the community that we can talk about. These are all important things that we want to keep this going. So yeah. February is not just February heart health. It's every day is heart health and making oh, ourselves kinder, wiser, 
so, yeah. you know, is is what we need to focus on. Like she said, I, body, mind, and soul. Yeah. yeah, and yesterday I shared something. I was talking about um, hugging and that hugging helps lower blood pressure. Mm. Yay! It does, God. It does, and stress. So, good. so I know that right now maybe you're not hugging as many people, but hug whoever's next to you. Yay. Give them love. It really does. It, it's... It's, and it says a lot too, right? Yeah. There's sometimes your words can't say what like a hug or a touch. And there might be somebody out there that's going through hard things and needs that. And that's going to help their their heart as well, right? And um, Oh, Kyla had one question before we go. How far in advance could symptoms of a heart attack show up? Uh, it could be quite a while. Some people have symptoms for, you know, a few days. Uh, okay. A couple hours beforehand to like the first time they have the symptom right away they know and they kind of sit on it give it the afternoon eat some lunch like most people will sit on it for a little bit and then they'll realize like they can't take it and something's wrong and then they'll go in but some people will wait a day to week to a month wow or two okay. you know with this pain going on and off before it gets so bad that they have to go in like mm -hmm. okay now I, I i know i have to go in and that's what i hear commonly um from our patients like well what, you know what, what, what was happening when this pain what, what were you doing when the pain came and went how long did it last okay yeah. so those are the first questions that we ask you so remembering so, to just kind of pay attention and be like proactive of your health right so like make sure that you do your wellness checkups get that blood work done understand what the blood work means um and you know take your pulse like gosh we have so much access to information right like we can yeah. google so many questions that you know people couldn't do a long time ago but we're a little inundated with information sometimes right so it's just like whoosh, our brains can't yes. get it all but you know take some time for your heart because it is the most important muscle in our body and we need it so that we can live and so we can help other people the more we educate and learn for take care of our bodies we can also help take care of our children and our friends and you know all of our loved ones so we love ninja staff give her love you guys love. Too. and um we will see you guys um soon oh and march wait let's talk about march it's march there's so many things going on at mff so in march okay so for march we're doing makeovers on wednesdays what yes awesome arlene is going to be doing makeup stuff so we'll be seeing her at 4 p.m sharp on Wednesdays and she's gonna be using me and my face to do stuff to it and um, so please tune in for that Yay. Thursdays is also because March is like a international month for like women or something like that I can't remember exactly what it is or national one of them and um, so I'm gonna be featuring different women and them and their successes in starting their own small businesses wow. so let's support small businesses and women and then um, I have a special speaker on Monday um, the second week of March and also, I'm going to be talking about spring and the seasons and change. So there's just a lot happening in March. I'm really excited about it. And my birthday's in March. And it's the first uh, week of spring or first day of spring. And it's the anniversary of MFF Yay! on March 17th, the very first day I turn on the iPad. So look for lots wow. of fun things that are going to happen. Tune in and join us at maryfultonfit.vhx.tv to work out with us. Try a week for free and um, use code MFF Love. MFF Love. Yay! And that's love it. You. We love you. Bye. See you soon. Oh, join the Upper Body Challenge. Starts for March. Sorry, there's so many things. So many things. <laughs> See you soon. Bye. Bye. Oh, stronger together. My body, soul.